All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today we're going to be talking about how to format your hard drives and your thumb drives. So I've got a couple of examples here today. I've got the hard drive that I used in my PS4 hard drive tutorial that I want to reformat as a Windows drive, and then I've also got a thumb drive that I'd like to be cross-compatible with a number of different systems, including Mac and PC going between those two platforms. So, out and about in the world, you're gonna get a lot of hard drives and thumb drives from a lot of different sources. You're gonna get them from friends who don't need them anymore, you're gonna buy them online from a cheap Chinese reseller, or you're gonna go down to Best Buy and grab a discounted USB thumb drive when it's Black Friday. And the easiest way that you have to format a lot of these drives is to simply go into the File Explorer, which is the window that you use to sort through all the files, folders, and devices connected to your computer. And if you don't have this open, you can just usually find it by default attached to your dock at the bottom here called File Explorer, or you can just go to Ask Cortana and say File Explorer and hit Enter, and then just find your way to the This PC icon in the sidebar, and this should usually have all of the drives plugged into your computer. Like, this is my main drive, this space is my secondary hard drive where I store everything, and then this is my disk drive, my passport hard drive, and then my thumb drive. And that once you've got this open, just select the drive that you want to edit, right-click it, and say Format. And that's going to bring up the Quick Format window, and I'll just run through all of these different options here. So the first option is the capacity. How big do you want to format this drive to be? And normally in the quick format window, this should be the maximum space allowed because they don't really let you format multiple partitions with this tool anymore. But what you can do with a lot of hard drives and even thumb drives is you can put multiple different partitions on them or multiple different chunks of formatted space so that you can sort of separate them out and have multiple hard drives technically running off of the same device. Now, this sounds cool, but unless you know a good reason to do that, the more partitions that you have on a single hard drive or thumb drive, the higher the chances are that one or more of those partitions will fail, you'll get files corrupted, or the whole hard drive itself might crash and you will have to reformat it anyway. So it's typically a good idea only to have one partition on one drive and not to have more than that, just for the safety of your files. So just leave this, if you have the option of making this smaller, just leave it at the maximum number possible. And also note that this number will often be smaller than the actual hard drive itself. This drive that we're using, this new volume, F, is actually a one terabyte uh, Western Digital Passport drive, and you might notice it's only allowing me to use 931 gigs of that space. So basically, 69 of those gigs, giggity, uh, is being used up by the system to manage my files, to store stuff, to do all of the behind-the-scenes tasks so it's going to use up some of that space regardless for system stuff. Next up, we've got the file system. And by default, you only have two options, which is NTFS, which is the Windows file system. That's going to be the more secure file system that offers you a lot of the uh, data movement options that Windows has to make sure that your files don't get corrupted if they're interrupted mid-transfer, all these sorts of things. And then you've also got XFAT. And XFAT stands for Extended File Allocation Table. This is the successor to the FAT32 file extension. And basically what this lets you do is it lets you put any type of file you want onto your drive and then take it between Windows and Mac. This is a very basic file partition type that can be read by a number of different systems, including Linux. Now, where it is better than, say, using a FAT32, which was an option for formatting thumb drives back on Windows XP, 
is that this allows you to have files larger than four gigs in size. And if you're a guy like me, I work in a lot of video files, then you're going to want to have more than just a limit of four gigs on each one of those files. And in Windows 10 and Windows 7, uh, it's your only secondary option to partition stuff as, aside from NTFS. If you find that you want to format something as a FAT32 or something else, you'll need to use the tool called Disk Partition, which is used via the Windows command prompt. So this particular hard drive, I want to be a Windows drive, so I'm going to set this as NTFS, and then I'm going to leave it at the default allocation size of 4096 bytes. Now, allocation size, the idea here is, Inside of a hard drive, think of it as like a, a, a closet filled with a bunch of shoe boxes. And you can only put one item in each one of those shoe boxes. So if I had a bunch of really small items, like I had nothing but a bunch of Word docs and some small uh, photos to put inside of my shoe boxes, then I would want to use the smallest size possible. But since I'm going to be using a variety of different sized items, I'm going to leave it at the default file size or the allocation size of 4000. Uh, most of the time you don't need to use anything besides the default size, in this case it's 4000. But if you know that you need to have like a bunch of tiny Word docs or tiny text files, then you'll probably want to use something like 64 kilobytes. But that can be a little bit hinky when you start using bigger files. After that, we're going to want to name this file. So this is my. Chupacabra passport file. And then I'm going to leave it on quick format, which will format this drive very quickly. If you know that you have some sensitive documents that used to be stored on your drive, or you have, say you bought this drive from like a weird place and you're not sure how safe it is, you'll want to do a regular format because that's going to go through and slowly erase and garble all the data on the drive and make it harder to recover any of it. But since there's nothing that's ever been sensitive or questionable on this drive, I'm going to leave it on quick format and simply select start. And it's going to warn me that it's going to delete all the data that's still on that drive. I'm going to say that's just fine. Oh, whoops. Oh, wait, no, no. I, I, for a second there, I thought I partitioned it wrong. It is, it is going to be an NTFS drive, so that's good. And now this is ready to be used for whatever I want it to. And now I'm going to go over and reformat my Chupacabra thumb drive because I might need to use this drive on more than just my computer. So I'm going to format this. It currently is an NTFS drive. I'm going to set it to an XFAT drive. And then I'm going to leave it at the default allocation size and probably set it to like 4000. Same as I did with the NTFS drive, because this is mostly going to store my large video files for when I take them to either my sister's place or a friend's place to make it easier for me to upload them with a faster internet speed. And I'm just going to call this the Chupacabra. Oh, I can't make it that long with XFAT, I forgot. So we'll call this the Chupa Thumb for the Chupacabra Thumb Drive. And whoops, um, and I'm going to click Start. Again, it'll warn me that I'm about to erase everything on it. And now that has been partitioned as an XFAT drive, and I'm ready to go out into the world and use my drives. And that's basically it. Like, formatting things on Windows these days is a lot easier, but if you need to format this as something else, you're going to have to look up a tutorial, because some people need to use, uh, say, a Mac hard drive on their Windows machine because they go across platforms a lot. And if that's the case, you'll typically need to download a driver that will change how some of these windows, like the quick format window, work. That'll allow you to uh, format it as a Mac journaled extended format, which is what the default Mac file type is. Some of these drivers will even allow you to format them into the Linux file types. And probably the most dynamic and most advanced file partition type is actually run on the Linux system which are the ones that have the best job of protecting your data in the event of like you're copying something over and then like you lose power or something. The other thing worth noting is if you do have a small thumb drive and you want to disconnect it from your computer, if you're new to having thumb drives, before you unplug it, you're going to want to right click it and see if there's an eject option. 
Basically, what happens is when you plug a thumb drive into a computer, it's got some of that thumb drive's information loaded onto the computer itself, and not all of it is written to the thumb drive and available for use yet. So to make sure that all of the information that needs to be on your drive is on your drive, you select the eject function, which will tell you that this is now safe to pull out of your computer so that you don't lose any information that might still be being written to that drive. Now with bigger thumb drive or with bigger hard drives, not thumb drives, you, you typically don't have that option down here. Whenever you're ready, you can just pop that out of the computer once you're done copying stuff to it and then move it to another system and then everything should be hunky-dory. So that's it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. I've been your host, Larry. Thanks for joining me for another tutorial. If you have any questions or need any clarification on anything, just throw that information in the comments below. Um, otherwise, I'll be covering how to do things like use the disk management window to make changes to different things on your hard drives, and also how to format things from the command prompt. So that's it. Have a good one, everybody. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and toodles.